This episode of Film Ride is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Film Ride, we're taking a look at the DJI Ronin. Welcome to Film Ride, the show that takes the mystery out of the effects techniques. Going to some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley. And before we get into today's episode, if you haven't seen it, we released a teaser for our project that's coming up this summer that we've been talking about but haven't really been explaining. If you have not seen the teaser, check it out right here. Here we have all these lanterns. Everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. This is either going to be the best thing we've ever done or the worst. There's no other way to say it. Oh my god! I think it's going to look good. Film Riot's epic summer event will be three months of awesome starting April 2nd all the way through June. And I know April isn't summer, but hey, if movies can do it, why can't we? Each month will start with a new short film and then be followed by a full month of behind the scenes for that film. April 2nd will be the release of my new short film, then May 7th will be the release of Seth Worley's film, and finally on June 4th, we're gonna be releasing Andrew Kramer's new film, all on our Film Riot YouTube channel. What I love about all of this is that we're gonna be able to show the different process of each filmmaker one month after the next. I'm super excited about it, hopefully you guys will be too. But to get schedules and more detail about the event, go right here, this will be the main hub for all three months of the content. Links are also in the notes below. It's three months, three different filmmakers, and three brand new short but moving on to today's goodies, we are toying around with this sexy beast right here. I've had the Ronin for about a month now and I'm loving it. Comes in this very sexy carrying case, which inside you have the gimbal, the handles, two quick releases, the battery, battery charger, dovetail, rods, the tuning stand, and of course the remote. Then we have our tool pouch, which comes with the camera screws, hex wrench, and lens brace. First thing I'm gonna do is set up the tuning stand, then drop on the handles, which I'll adjust my hand grips to the spot that is most comfortable for me. Then I'll connect the gimbal to the handles by sliding it into the quick release, then tightening that down. Next, I'll throw on the battery and tighten that down, which this battery has lasted a while. Just doing short runs with it has really lasted a lot longer than I thought it was going to. After that, I add my accessories up top, then it's time to prep the camera. For that, I throw on my dovetail, then make sure my battery is fully charged and on, and the media is in the camera as well. All of this matters. Then I slide the camera on, move it back and forth until it is relatively centered, and then lock that latch. Then I'll balance the vertical tilt by unlocking these latches and raising and lowering them to gauge whether I have this axis balanced or not. I'll lean the whole carriage back. If the camera moves forward, it's too bottom heavy. If it moves back, it's too top heavy. To fix this, I continue to raise and lower the carriage until the camera stays right where I put it. Then we move on to the roll axis. If I let the camera go and it falls left or right, we loosen these knobs here and then move the carriage left or right to counter that until we have this section balanced as well. Then I double check all the points I just balanced and finally we move on to the last point, which is the pan axis. For this, I will pull back on the rig to tilt it up. If it rolls back, we come back here, unlatch and adjust the pan axis so the system doesn't spin. Once I have that, I'll check the opposite, tilting the rig the other way and I keep doing Doing this until the rig is balanced here and we are set. Now we turn the system on by holding down the power button and the system snaps to. Next I take out my phone and connect to the Ronin through the DJI Assistant app. Inside here we're going to hit wizard, then auto tune stability. The Ronin will now check all the motors and do its thing and we are good to go. We now have a balance system that we can test out and make sure it's all good. Now I'll throw it back on the stand to set up a few more things with the app, but instead of leaving it on the tuning stand as is, you can remove the top and mount it to a C stand, which is insanely helpful and super smart since I'm rarely somewhere where the short stand makes any sense. Being able to put it anywhere and keep it stable is pretty huge. But now we jump back into the app, then into wizard, and I'll make sure that smooth track mode is on. With that on, the system will follow your movements. So if I move the handles, the camera pans. If I tilt, it tilts. But if you turn it off, the camera doesn't respond to your movements. So I'll flip that back on. Then we go to speed, deadband, and acceleration. Deadband will adjust how much you need to move the handles before the camera starts moving. Speed is the speed at which the camera actually moves, and acceleration will adjust how fast it keeps up with those movements. This takes some trial and error, mess around with these numbers until you have a configuration that feels best for you. Now I'm ready to do some test shots, but before we do, some sponsor loving. Domain.com is the place to go if you're trying to brandify yourself. 
Let me explain. If you're an innovator or an inventor of any kind, you need domain.com. Why? Because you need a brand, right? Yeah. You want people to understand your brand, yeah. right? Well, domain.com has a list of domain extensions, like 200 plus that you can pick to help push your brand, like .ninja, .nyc, .expert, .club. That's brandification. You know what I'm saying? You're pushing your brand and fully brandifying yourself. Are these words? They are now. So if you want to be fully brandified and you want to save money, use the coupon code FILMRIGHT at checkout to get 20% off your domain names, your emails, your web hosting, your, your brandification package, basically. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. Logo. So now we have our Ronin all set up and balanced, which the first time I did it took about 20 or 30 minutes. And the only reason it took that long is because originally I got some bad information from a video about how to balance it. So when you're balancing yours, make sure you get that more in-depth look right here directly from DJI. So you're getting all the correct information. Now that I know what I'm doing, it takes me about five minutes to balance it. But once I had that balanced properly, I took it out for my first test. And here is my very first shot that I did with the Ronin. As you can see, this is a little bit rough. I needed to adjust the speed and dead band, but overall this is a totally usable shot and with my first attempt at this system which is completely nuts using something like a steady cam or other stabilizer for that matter you really need some time behind that piece of gear to get anything usable at all i was really shocked at how grab and go this one is but now here are a few test shots i've done over the past few weeks Another thing of awesomeness accompanying this delightful gathering of metal is briefcase mode. With this on, I can roll the Ronin to different operating configurations with the carriage orienting itself where it needs to be. This is a great way to get low shots or get through tighter spaces. Finally, we have the remote. With this, I can control my camera movements independently of the operator's movements. So an operator can concentrate on not falling and keeping the rig generally in the area that it needs to be while I focus on framing. Really, really helpful. But I'll get more into the remote operations and other details about the Ronin in later episodes as I get more proficient with it. But there are so many pros here. The only real con is that it's a bit heavy. I'm able to use it for a good amount of time before getting too fatigued, but I will say that it is heavier than the Movi. However, the Ronin goes for $2,500 on B&H right now, whereas the Movi M5 goes for $4,000. And the M5 can only hold cameras up to five pounds, whereas the Ronin can hold cameras up to 16 pounds. So if you really wanted to compare the Ronin to a Movi, it would have to be the M10, which is $8,000 and can hold cameras up to 12 pounds, still not as much as the Ronin. So for me personally, the Ronin is a much smarter choice and so far I'm extremely happy with it. But again, I'll talk more about it as I get more comfortable with it. If you want to check out the Ronin for yourself, go right here. That's it for today. Don't forget to check out filmriot.com for more info about our upcoming summer event. I'm incredibly excited about it. Hopefully you guys are too. Also, DJI released a short film using the Ronin a while ago. If you want to check that out, it's in the notes section below. Of course, you can also follow me on Twitter right here. And I'll see you guys next week when I can't fit into my box.